Welcome everyone to the 43rd annual juried show with the Anderson Arts Center. I'm Morgan DeBrew, the Interim Executive Director here at the Arts Center, and we're thrilled to have over 251 artists represented in this year's show. That's almost 500 pieces, so this juror, Miss Esther Randall, had a lot of work cut out for her. I'll take a few seconds and introduce you to Miss Esther Randall from Kentucky now. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, I am so gratified and happy to be here. My name is Esther Randall. I am a professor at uh, Eastern Kentucky University in Richmond, Kentucky. I'm also the gallery director. So I have some experience in looking at art and selecting art. I'd like to say that it was a really tremendous challenge because the level of work in the show was excellent and I had many favorites that didn't quite make the cut. So you will forgive me, won't you? This is my second place winner. And as you can see, it's quite a stunning painting, not only for its color, but for its scale. Uh, it resonated with me because the use of light, uh, filtering in from behind this log and subtly getting darker and darker as you go down. But what's really amazing about this is that when things go into shadow, there are still things to be seen. So it provides a, a wealth of experiences with light and color in here. And of course, who couldn't love these leaves that are in the center, filtering down, catching our eye? Although it's the smallest part of the painting, it's probably the most important. When I first was during this show, I had no idea that this would be my first place winner. It was not my favorite. But the more I looked at this piece, the more intriguing it became. Uh, one is seduced by the beauty of the yellow flowers, the red vase, the blue vase. But as one begins to look more closely, one begins to see the eyes of the man sitting very rigidly behind this and almost a confrontational accusing look and that gives it a, a mystery, a deep mystery uh, about what's going on where we come in and we look at the title of its ritual, we see the place setting and the pair. Why a pair there? Everything's carefully chosen. This was my pl a choice for third place and I was struck immediately when I saw it by its ambition. You may not realize such a large image is made of three intaglio prints put together and usually intaglio prints are very small or rather small. So it's, it's large, it's a large work, but it's extra large for what it does. Now intaglio print is when uh, the artist takes a metal plate, cuts into it somehow either with acid or with a tool, forces ink into the recesses and prints it. Um, and this one invites us to come in and investigate, although it's large, it's also intimate because you can't, you can't fully appreciate it until you come up to it closely and look at all the interesting shapes and images that repeat itself throughout the whole image as we go up here, close up, here, and then we finally have this architectural print at the top. Lest you think that all we have are paintings and drawings to show, let me assure you that we give crafts their fair share. This is uh, an honorable mention place. It's like a small painting with the beautiful enamel surface in here backed by sterling silver with a sterling silver chain a very intimate and exquisite entry. This is one of my favorites, and of course I have a special place in my heart for pots and ceramics. Uh, this is a wonderful, beautiful pot with exquisite and very intricate carving up the side, a wonderful handle, uh, and you come in and it invites you to take a look at how this handle not only is attached here, but these two wonderful shapes here, and of course, our fun lid. 
Okay, in addition to the visual arts, we had an extra bonus with this Celtic harp, introducing an element of music. Uh, this is a truly impressive piece of craftsmanship, not only in the fitting of the wood, but the lovely carving of the oak leaves, basket weave, oak leaves coming up along here. And you must go take a look at the back because in the sound holes, they're absolutely stunning. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful piece. And here's the leaf. Now, as I was working, this, this was just one of my favorites for very personal reasons. Uh, the trees, the dark trees, weight everything, hold our attention in place, but then we notice that there's a beautiful sense of light, a gradation of light coming from one hill to another, coming down all the way down here. It's just a beautiful composition with this line pulling us in. And what it speaks to is the world perfected. It is idealized beauty. And why we love art is that it feeds our soul with something beautiful. But you know, art is not always beautiful, tranquil, edifying. Sometimes it's meant to challenge us and challenge the status quo and be uh, unpleasant, be ugly, be challenging on purpose as in this particular piece, where we have the skull, hands being strung up with chains, and the American flag. And how one interprets this will be entirely one's own. There is no one solution to this. But I feel fairly confident that the artist wanted to challenge our ideas about society in America. I want to thank Morgan and the Anderson Art Center for inviting me down here. It was a tremendous experience seeing all this wonderful art. You should be very proud of the arts community you have in Northern South Carolina, an impressive array of work. Uh, if I did not choose yours, I probably was really close to it and they made me be very selective. Thank you for this opportunity.